No. Not again. Nagaraja is an exciting two-player game of adventure, action selection, mazing and tile selection. The twin temples of two long-forgotten divinities have recently been uncovered in India. In this game, players take in the role of archaeologists as they race head-to-head -head Indiana Jones style to try and discover the right pathways through their temple to unlock some really important treasured relics. The first player to claim the most treasures without revealing the three cursed relics will win the game. To play a game of Nagaraja, players will steal a separate temple board each, shuffle the nine relic tiles of their corresponding colour, and place them randomly around their temple face down without covering the three entrances as marked by this very edgy looking edge. The room tiles are placed in a stack face down and the first one is revealed. To start the game, players will draw five cards each from the top of the draw deck. There are four different type of action cards in the deck as marked by these four ancient icons. Cards that feature these Lego shaped fate stick icons have effects that manipulate the outcomes of the dice used in the game. Action cards that show this card symbol allows players to manipulate cards from a player's hand or in the discard pile. Treasure icon cards help players to swap and peek at the face down treasure relic tokens that are featured around theirs or an opponent's temple. These action cards with the room icons on it allows players to manipulate the labyrinth of rooms in their own or an opponent's temple. The cards that players have in their hand have two specific functions. Firstly, the cards can be played for their top section, which allows a player to acquire a certain number of combination of fate sticks, as long as those cards played have a matching icon. Alternatively, players can activate the action or bonus effect on the bottom of a card if they happen to roll any Naga symbols on their fate sticks, and then resolve their effect. The red arrows indicate an action that affects your opponent, and a transparent arrow indicates an action that impacts yourself. Across the game, players will be attempting to vie for different room tiles by using their fate sticks. By successfully bidding for these tiles, players will hopefully be able to explore their temple and claim important treasured relics. Across each round, players will need to call upon their fate by selecting cards from their hand that have one or more of the same icon, which indicates which composition of fate sticks a player can use for that particular round. In each round, one room tile will be up for grabs. If it features a podium, an amulet token is placed there. It's a two for one package. In order to win a room tile, players need to roll their fate sticks and simply have the greatest number of fate points as represented by these dots. Whomever has the most fate points wins the room tile and therefore can place it on their temple board. Battling and winning temple rooms is important as it is the primary way players find their treasure and win. Claiming a room isn't as merely as simple as comparing polka dots on sticks. Players can actually fight back. If a player or both players have rolled a Naga symbol from any of their fate sticks on their turn, they alternate in turn order and can use them to activate bottom actions of cards still left in their hands. Some of the extra action card effects include gaining extra fate points, forcing your opponent to re-throw two fate sticks, discarding your opponent's fate sticks, peek or swap hidden relics in their temples, pivoting, moving or swapping room ties in your temple or even in your opponent's temple. Players can also set up traps. And finally, they provide you with some extra card drawing abilities. These interactions specifically disrupt your opponent's ability to explore their temple, gain treasure, and ultimately succeed. When a player wins a room tile, they get to place it on their temple board, starting from one of the three entrances and connecting their pathway towards the edges. When a pathway is successfully connected from an entrance to a relic, that relic is flipped over and it is revealed. If three cursed relics are revealed this way, that player immediately loses the game. If treasure relics with a total victory point value of 25 or more are revealed, that player wins the game immediately. If a player places their ninth tile in their temple, the player with the highest victory point wins. Amulets can only be acquired if the entrance pathway connects a player to it in their temple. Amulets in acquired rooms provide special bonus effects such as gaining extra victory points, drawing card bonuses, and opportunities to cancel your opponent's card actions. These are usually kept secret from the opposing player. The composition of these fate sticks have been carefully crafted.
The brown fate sticks contain a combination of different number of fate points, but they have no Naga symbols on them. Half of the green fate sticks contain Naga symbols for card activation effects, whilst the white fate sticks contain one Naga symbol and some moderate amounts of fate points. Selecting the right composition of fate sticks to throw in your turn, as well as balancing the action cards that you keep in your hand, is truly a risk versus reward situation. Do you spend your card to gain more fate sticks or do you save those powerful cards for later when you most need it? This level of tension is elevated by the unknown fact of what hidden surprises your opponent may have up their sleeve. It's just like venturing into a forbidden temple for the first time where you risk your life. It's thematically fitting, isn't it? There are some strategies that you can employ in this game to improve your gameplay. It helps when playing the game to use the peeking action to check where some of the relics are before investing time in placing tiles and connecting them together in your temple. You don't always want to connect your tiles to a cursed relic. It also helps to keep the fate point bonus cards up your sleeve to boost your fate points if you feel like you're falling behind in the bidding war. Players can also use the trap strategically to block pathways, especially in the corners of the temples where you know an uncursed relic might be hidden. Also, drawing cards is a very powerful action in this game. Don't underestimate the power of having more choices and actions in your hand. And finally, the discarding fate stick power is so good because it nullifies the actions that your opponent can take on their turn. I'm always really excited to see a brand new two player game come out on the market, especially with this level of complexity and theme. The game works really well to build a sense of ebb and flow of interactions between both players. Your opponent is constantly trying to sabotage your path to victory, and I think that the mechanics here at the two player level really synergize well. If this game was a multiplayer game, I don't think that these elements would have worked as cohesively. Naga Raja does remind me of another board game called Karuba, where one player calls out a tile and people place them all simultaneously on their player boards. But the issue with Karuba is the lack of player interaction. Everybody feels like they are playing solitaire in Karuba. However, in Naga Raja, you can set up traps to intercept your opponent's actions. This really elevates the racing element in the game and really makes you feel like you're clambering over the other person to try and claim the treasure first. These D4 Fate Sticks are what immediately drew me to this game. The fact that there are three different types of Fate Sticks is a really cool design element. This allows players to make calculated choices and gambles throughout the game. The cards, illustrated by renowned board game artist Vincent Chitre, really evokes that sense that you're watching a motion picture or action blockbuster. This game constantly presents players with a dichotomy of branching decisions to make. For example, do you use the top of your card or trigger the action at the bottom of your card? Do you check the relics in your opponent's temple or check the relics in your temple? Do you manipulate the room tiles in your opponent's temple to make it more difficult for them to find a pathway to those important treasure relics? Or do you clear a pathway on your player board so that you can gain those treasured points first? It's this binary level of choice that makes this game truly awesome. There are some points to consider if you're thinking about getting Naga Raja for your board game collection. First of all, there are some elements of luck in both the card drawing and the throwing of those very important fate sticks. The luck factor, however, is strongly counterbalanced by the fact that there are a plethora of different card action effects that appear in the deck. There also may be some rare situations where you might not have anything that you can do on your turn, especially when your player has outbid you on those important room tiles and you also didn't throw any Naga symbols when you threw your fate sticks. This situation, however, has been balanced out in the game's design because the person who does not claim the room tile at the end of the round actually gets to draw three cards from the top of the card deck. They get to keep two and pass the one that they don't want to the other player. This means that the player who lost the room tile bidding gets one extra card option in their hand for the next round, as well as the knowledge of what the other player has in their hand. In considering my final verdict, Naga Raja is a superb addition to the library of two player games out there. 
It offers an engaging theme and a highly tense and interactive experience that harmonizes the gameplay and mechanics really well. Thank you once again for joining me for another Board Game Sanctuary video. If you really like this video, please remember to smash that like, subscribe and share button. I also want to say a huge shout out to all the people currently subscribed to this channel and I want to say a huge thank you to all the people cu currently support me and my endeavours. I really, really appreciate it. This is Danny signing out. I'll see you guys again soon in the near future. Goodbye!